So, mate, how do you want your meat today? Raw or cooked proper? <laughs> Wrap it up in foil, mate. I ain't letting my steak burn. <laughs> <laughs> Let me add a quick follow-up to my last tutorial on mid-journey video. This time we're focusing entirely on two specific modes inside mid-journey video, standard and raw. What exactly do these modes mean and how do they change the results you get when creating videos? If you want to learn more about animate images, which is the actual video creation workflow in mid-journey, you can simply click the video link at the end of this video or use the first link in the description below to watch that tutorial. And as a small bonus, at the end of this video, I'll also show you how using the parameter dash dash Q4 during image generation, which activates the highest quality or maximum detail level, will actually influence the final look of your videos as well. Now let's get to the main topic of this video, which is the comparison between the standard and raw modes. Here's a quick look at how it works. First, we need to look at the settings. Just like with images, you can open the settings panel by clicking this icon up here. Once you're there, move your mouse over to the field called model. And within the mode section, you can choose either standard, which is the default setting, or raw. No matter if you're writing an image prompt or a video prompt, the mode you select, whether it's the standard or raw, will remain active until you change it again. By the way, you can also skip manually switching modes in the settings and instead add the command dash dash raw directly to your prompt while the standard mode is active and it will override the setting just for that prompt. To start the video creation process, simply drag an image into the starting frame field, which is located in the top left, just below the prompt bar, or click on the image you want to use and then select the desired motion level in the lower right corner. For this test series, I've prepared a few images with different levels of complexity and ran them through the various motion options. You're probably already familiar with this four grid layout. Top left is low motion, top right is high motion, bottom left is low motion with raw, and bottom right is high motion with raw. You'll see exactly which settings I used for each test, like whether I selected manual or auto mode in the specific examples. The prompts and the motion levels have been kept identical for each image to make the differences clear. In the first example, which was created entirely using manual mode, we see a Dungeons and Dragons inspired scenario. Four brave heroes stand on a bridge in front of a massive castle, while a powerful dragon flies in and lands on one of the towers. All four versions look strong, with a consistent style, and the dimensions and lighting feel convincingly real. Of course, we can't skip something cute, so here are five small puppies, all piled up and playing together created entirely using auto mode. They're fighting for the best spot, and this is where Raw really shows its strengths. The dogs move in a slightly more realistic way, and their behaviour looks very natural. Still, the standard versions are also well executed and quite fun to watch. Who hasn't wanted to visit the homeworld of the Fremen, Arrakis, or as others call it, Dune? Here we see a lone warrior walking across the endless desert of dust and spice. Once again, Raw captures the natural movements of characters a bit better. Since this version was done entirely with auto mode, I had less control over the execution. The fourth example, created fully in manual mode, takes us out into the Canadian wilderness, where a friendly forest creature has found exactly what it was looking for. Beer. All the versions turned out nicely, and what I really like here is that the Raw mode once again gives the video a slightly more realistic feel. The next two examples cost me quite a few fast hours. Even after repeatedly adjusting the prompts, the results were more than disappointing, and what I'm showing here is honestly the best I managed to get. In the example with the ship, which is supposed to be the Titanic, and was done using auto mode, it's clear that the source image looks too much like a 1990s 3D rendering. The outputs, whether in raw or standard, turned out pretty dull. In the final example, created fully in manual mode, we see a battle-hardened orc with a sword and shield walking toward a white sphere. The idea was that he would see his reflection in the sphere, and upon touching it, a mechanism would activate, showing a display with two digital eyes, similar to the futuristic robot from Wall-E. Apparently, Mid-Journey interprets the look and feel of the orc, 
based on the material of the sphere, which is why the figure ends up looking like it's made of plastic. My conclusion? Auto delivers random results while manual allows the user to maintain some creative control. High motion feels more dynamic, and low motion is a bit more restrained. But that's not always the case. Sometimes low motion even ends up looking more active than high motion. When we compare standard and raw, it becomes clear that the initial material, this source image, has the biggest impact on the outcome. Raw tends to add a bit more realism to the movements, as we saw with Bigfoot and the puppies. As promised, I want to answer the question of whether using the parameter dash dash Q4, which activates the highest quality level, also has an impact on video creation. I often hear and read that the better your source image is, the better your video results will be. While this might not be true for every platform out there, it definitely has an effect in mid-journey. The reason is simple. When your starting image has more detail, in lighting, modelling and overall appearance, this will naturally show up in your video as well. Put simply, the more material mid-journey has to work with, the better it can process it, at least in my experience. Let me simply show you what I mean with a quick example. First, we'll compare the two source images side by side. Here's the one with the high quality setting, and here's the one without it. The Q4 version is noticeably better, with richer material, better lighting, and more detail overall. In comparison, the version without Q4 looks relatively rough. Now let's immediately look at the videos created from these images, using manual mode with low motion, and the prompt, camera rotates around the shoe. In the top left, you see the video with Q4, and in the top right, the one without Q4. Will the average viewer notice this difference? Maybe not. But it's exactly these subtle nuances that can turn a good result into an outstanding one. As for me, I use dash dash Q4 carefully, because it does take longer to generate images. And as we all know, when something takes longer, it also uses up your fast hours, unless you've switched to relax mode. Let me close with a quote directly from the Midjourney help desk. In Midjourney version 7, the default setting for quality is 1. You can also set values to 2 or 4, which will use 2 times or 4 times more GPU time. Keep in mind, the quality parameter only influences the first set of 4 images you create. It doesn't affect later variations, in-painting, out-painting, or upscales. The dash dash Q4 parameter is an experimental mode in Midjourney version 7. It may provide better details and coherence, but it is not compatible with Omni Reference. One side note, parts of the intro were created using VO3. Until Midjourney adds voice generation, I'm using it as a show element to make the hook more interesting. That's it for this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you very much for listening. See you soon. Your channel, AI, now you know.